Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Shelley Plum, and I'd like to welcome you all back to From the Hip. I have a unique story. I want to ask you all out there, what is your greatest fear? I can tell you, as a child, my greatest fear, I grew up in Washington State, and one of my greatest fears was the forest. The forest was dark, and I would envision goblins and witches and all kinds of things in that forest. But I'll tell you what, my grandmother took me by the hand one day and she took me out into the forest and she showed me a whole different side of the forest. She showed me the birds. She showed me the trees and the plants and the creatures that were in the bushes. And I'll tell you what, just looking at the forest like that gave me a whole new perspective, a whole new perspective. So having said that, I have a unique treat for you today. We have Jim Abernethy with us today. Now, Jim spends a lot of his life under the water. Now, under the water was something that I'm willing to bet a lot of you out there think that you're afraid of, and that's sharks. But he has a unique viewpoint that I think is very interesting to see. So we're going to be back in a moment with Jim. I'd like to share with you another special encounter that we had during the making of Tigris Sharks. With Hannah Frazier at the center stage and Sean Heinrichs directing and a fabulous film crew, we watched the Tiger Shark swim around Hannah and suddenly this shark came in. New to human encounters and everything going on, everyone on board wanted to name this new shark after our superstar. Hannah Frazier. May I present to you Hannah Tiger. And as you can see, Jason Harvey kneeling in the sand, giving Hannah Tiger affection. The shark is watching his hand signal, and every time he gives it, the shark comes back for love and affection. This shark is responding to just love and affection, not fish. We did not feed at all. This is just love and affection, which proves beyond a shadow of a doubt, once again, sharks are sentient animals and need to be treated with respect and admiration, the same as dogs and cats. It's time we put a stop to shark finning worldwide. If you'd like to find out more about how we stumbled upon giving sharks love and affection to remove hooks from them or help us save these magnificent creatures that are so essential to our future existence on the planet. Be the voice for those that cannot speak. Visit our website. Contact us. Thank you. Well, hello everyone, welcome back, and I hope, I hope you enjoyed that video that we just played because I will tell you what, that is live footage with uh, this magnificent gentleman that is sitting right next to me, and this is Jim Abernethy. How are you, Jim? I'm doing wonderful. Oh, great, great. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of the viewers out there were watching that magnificent footage, all the video with the, the shark there, and that shark's name is Hannah, right? Correct. Okay, can you fill them in? What's going on with that video? Well, uh, Hannah Tiger was named after Hannah Frazier, our Australian model that we uh, made a, a viral video for conservation protesting the war on sharks in Australia. Hannah Frazier danced with tiger sharks without any mask, protection, scuba tank, anything. And uh, that was our peaceful protest. But unfortunately, Hannah Tiger came in and Hannah, I believe, has never seen people before. She right. was very uh, agitated and nervous and, and afraid and it swam too fast and it kind of destroyed our film set now because it's a what I refer to as a wild tiger. And uh, in order to get this wild tiger relaxed, um, we smothered Hannah for five days with affection. Okay, so let me stop you a minute. Okay. Uh, most of us, and, and until I had my discussion with you a few days ago, uh, don't think of sharks and love together in the same sentence. I, I mean, I think that's very okay. true. So, so tell them what you mean by affection. 
um, when you go home and you pet your dog, yes. the dog uh, actually seeks out affection even more than food. And these are my dogs, basically. I've been living at sea since 1998, 25 days a month, year round. And uh, these sharks have become uh, very familiar with my crew and I. Uh, the person that's petting the shark in Hannah Tiger is actually Jason, our chef. And uh, uh, it's an amazing experience to have a wild animal um, come towards you on a hand signal uh, in order to get its head rubbed, which is exactly what's happening. We don't feed the sharks uh, on our expeditions. So they're here because of the scent of fish, which is in the water, but they don't actually get to eat. So Hannah Tiger is actually just uh, responding to a hand signal from Jason that says, do you want your head rubbed? And as you can see, tiger sharks, and all sharks for that matter, are sentient creatures and actually appreciate affection even over food. Is that right? It is. It's that, hard to believe. That is incredible. That, that's incredible. So can you describe how, how did you get to that point where you started petting the, the tops of their heads and all of that? I'm sure that didn't happen overnight, no, right? No, it didn't. It was a, a very strange thing that happened uh, back in uh, around 98 or 99, I met this, or saw this shark that only had one eye, a lemon shark, and I named him Captain Ron after this very comical movie that the star doesn't have a left eye as well. And I felt sorry for the shark. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it would survive. But in 2003, um, Captain Ron, the lemon shark, uh, swam in with this huge hook going through its bottom jaw. Oh. And I just felt so sorry for it. And uh, I sat there watching it swim around as this hook is making an even bigger hole in its jaw. And I got this crazy idea, at least back then, that uh, I wonder if I could bond with the shark and gain its trust enough that I could pull the shark in close to my head while I'm rubbing its head. Yes. If it would appreciate affection enough that the shark would trust me so that I could pull it in close to my head, visualize taking the hook out, and in fact, within two hours, I had that hook out. And I learned in 2003 that sharks are sentient creatures, just like dogs, and love and thrive on affection. They've just never had it. Since that time, I've removed hooks from over uh, 90, I think it's 91 sharks have had uh, as many as four different hooks removed um, in that manner, using affection, which is unbelievable. And uh, Many of the videos that we have, um, like the one with Tarantino, yes. you actually see a tiger shark chasing me around in order to get its head rubbed. And that's why the trailer for the film Tales by Light by Abraham Joff and starring one of the world's most talented photographers, Eric Chang. I've seen his, you showed me his He's work. It's amazing. incredible. Yes. Right. And, and so is Abraham Joff. And, uh, this work where the trailer that National Geographic Australia made has received over 20 million views in that short amount of time because the subject matter, uh, sharks uh, responding to affection, yes. is literally unbelievable. Right. But we teach people every single week how to make friends with a shark in a short amount of time. And when I say friends, I mean to the point that the shark will actually follow you around in order to receive affection. And we're not feeding him during any of this time. So this is really groundbreaking information in, in my opinion. The reason is, is living in South Florida, <coughs> excuse me, there is almost, uh, sharks are misunderstood. And, and you see videos of them, uh, people fishing for them. Can you comment on that? What, uh, how, are, how are sharks treated in our waters right now? Well, I would say that 99% of the world believes what they've seen on TV. Jaws? TV, yeah. yeah, the Jaws mm -hmm. mentality uh, is believed. And on TV, uh, you know, they project them as uh, mindless man-eating monsters. And most of the world would rather have them dead than yeah. in their ocean, especially if you're going to go swimming in the ocean. But the truth uh, is that sharks are completely misunderstood. Um, what even the international shark attack file calls shark attacks 
is really a sharp mistake. And a the mistake. Proof, it's yes. a mistake, okay. clearly. And the <coughs> proof is in the statistics because the majority of the shark attacks, as they labeled them, it's actually a bite and release. And certainly a, a vicious predator that has the capability with jaws like this, powerful fish, right. if they wanted to take us down, then the seven billion times we go in the water on a yearly basis would have a lot more statistics of 75 attacks year round worldwide and less than five per year average uh, dying. In fact, if you look at the statistics of, of nature, animals, almost all animals, bite and kill mm -hmm. more people than sharks do um, every single year. For example, cows in the United States uh, kill 20 people a year. The domestic dog and the they do. Yes, the That's domestic, very vicious animal, the cow. They the, the, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you why. don't. You don't think of that, well, do think you? Of it. It's four <coughs> times as many as sharks worldwide uh -huh. on average. Right. The domestic dog and the domestic cat are like 16 to 20 deaths uh, just in the United States. Right. Uh, deer kill 135 people on average yearly. And one of my favorite statistics uh, is. 1,600 people are attacked and bitten every single year in the state of New York by people. By but we people. don't have People Week. Right. And, and because <laughs> it's literally right. unbelievable right. for the media to project any of these animals as a mindless man-eating monster because we all know them to be very nice. Right. However, very, very few people go in the water, less than 1% of our population, and a very a uh, small percentage of them actually seek out sharks. Now, as a conservationist, I believe that the best way for me to help this species get the reputation it deserves uh, was to target the most dangerous sharks in the world and swim with them every day, never with a cage. And that's exactly what my business does. Right, right. And uh, we started this uh, in the 90s. And um, it's been incredible to see, um, uh, for example, uh, m one of my best friend's daughter, who's 15, um, swam uh, with tiger sharks at night three times in just a week She's, and she, when she was 15. The, so I've had uh, wounded warriors that yes. um, can't really swim that well uh, in the water with tiger sharks and bull sharks and hammerheads. And, we keep doing this uh, over and over again so that I can hopefully let the producers that want to make sensationalistic shark shows realize that this is really tabloid journalism at best. Right. What yeah. the world wants to see is the truth. And fortunately, uh, some uh, uh, producers actually produce the truth. And Tales by Light, which is showing this Thursday yes. at 8.30 here in, at the Cinemark Movie Theater, um, certainly shows them in their true nature, which is so in line with what the featured photographer, uh, Eric Chang, his mission is to show the world that the world's most dangerous isn't dangerous at all. Right, and right. Fortunately, sharks are used in that. And, uh, you know, one, one um, example of footage that you showed me that was uh -huh. uh, remarkable and I'll share with you is when you were using your ability to touch the shark and the shark wanted to be near you and you were able to remove a strap that was cutting and it was literally it looked like the strap had gone on when the shark was younger and as it grew it was cutting a hole in it yes um, actually uh, that <coughs> was one of my crew Mike Brady uh -huh. uh, that uh, spent the whole dive um, trying to uh, make his relationship with that one bull shark. Right. Oh, it was a bull shark. That's right. It yes. Was a bull shark. And uh, he was able to remove that. Realistically, it was two months of work to get close to that one shark, but it just happened while uh, Tales by Light was being filmed yes. uh, with Eric Chang. Okay, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, we're going to take a break, okay. and um, I, we actually, instead of our sponsorship video, we're going to play another one of your videos, and Fantastic. this time, and if you could set this up for the viewers out there, this is the one with Tarantino. So can um, you set it up for viewers? Sure. Uh, Tarantino, uh, prior, two years prior to uh, this film that you're about to watch, I had spent five months with Tarantino uh, trying to um, gain her trust uh, so that I could remove 
three hooks, which that took me five months of being underwater with Tarantino to do that. Unfortunately for me, Tarantino swam off after I removed off all the hooks, and I didn't know if I'd ever see her again. Okay. Two years later, she shows up, and she came in at full speed. Really? And sometimes wild sharks do that, which is very scary. Yes. And I thought this was a wild shark, and I actually uh, went out in front of my camera and tried to stop her from running us over, and then realized, oh my God, it's, uh, it's Tarantino, well. it's one of my friends. <laughs> and uh, and I just happy was to wondering. see you. Yes, yes. <laughs> she came in the same way your dog visits you right. when you come home at night. And it's very excited to see you. And I, I didn't know if she would actually remember me. And and you know that scene was shot 25 miles from land um, by accident. I. Yes. Turned on the camera, not knowing it was filming, right, yes. and then realized, oh my gosh, it's Tarantino, and I, it was a very strong current, and I got swept away while I was giving her affection, and then I came back hoping that, that you know, I, I couldn't have hoped for what actually happened, yes. but she chased me down a couple times just to get her head rubbed, oh. and <laughs> the rest of that dive was just so magical. And a little bit later in the video, she's almost running over my camera, and I looked at my camera and saw the red light and thought, oh, oh my gosh, yeah. I may have just captured that whole scene. Yes. So uh, I think they'll uh, really see the true mm. nature of sharks with this Tarantino video. Okay. Uh, the reason that the shark is named Tarantino is because uh, a very good friend of mine, Seema Alois from the Czech Republic, um, actually was with it on a dive with me, and, and Tarantino before it was named, uh, swam up to him and took his video camera. And, and uh, of course, uh, it, it, it grabbed it and then spit it back out. And the second time it grabbed it, the camera had turned around and it was a video camera recording. And you saw all of his friends and him like, how do I get it back? And, <laughs> and he looked over at me and I could see that his facial expression was, you know, get it, right. get the camera back. Right. And, and I tried to tell him it's a 13 foot tiger shark. Uh, yeah. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm going to wait till it drops it. Right. And, uh, and after we watched the hysterically funny video of all of his friends through the teeth of the tiger shark, right. he said to me, Jim, can I named this shark after my favorite film maker and I said well well who's that and he said Quentin Tarantino of course and and, uh, <laughs> and I said well the shark's a girl he said how about just Tarantino and that's how Tarantino there we go name. that's great well, I hope oh, that they all enjoy it they will they will so we will be back in a moment so enjoy Hoping to find you when I came back today Just like I've been doing every time I come this way I first saw you, I could see your pain I reached out to help you and you didn't move away Oh, there's a current Dragging me away Dragging me away <laughs> 
pieces just to let you be. Recognize that we all need to change. Will I ever see you come this way again? Hope is a current. Well, hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed that video. They just watched Tarantino. So, I right. mean, it, 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 and, it, and he's your buddy. So, I'm curious, just one, uh, one quick question. So, if you go back to that location, will she, right, will she show up again? Um, they show up regularly. Okay. Uh, and my favorite uh, shark, Emma, who has been in uh, 13 different films so far, yes. uh, is there usually eight to ten months of the year. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we talked about sharks and conservation and, you know, the fact that they're misunderstood. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could, in concluding the interview, leave our viewers with any words of advice, what would they be? You, you mean in reference to how not to get bit? How not to get bit okay. and um, how, uh, any words of wisdom with regards to conservation, saving sharks as well? Well, r uh, first I'll address the saving sharks. Yes. Uh, right now there's two petitions online that you can find on uh, my nonprofit Wildlife Voice Facebook page. One is to ban the killing of sharks or the transportation of fins, which will stop sharks from being slaughtered in Florida. And another one is to ban the same, everything to do with shark fins in the United States. Right now, United States is seventh worst nation in the world for shark finning. Um, although we have laws that won't allow us to fin the shark, the practice of shark finning, um, but that still, they bring the animal in whole and then just take 4% of its body, the fins, which is such useless. I mean, we've already stopped in America uh, the rhinoceros horn trafficking, illegal wildlife tra trafficking. We've already stopped uh, elephant tusks from uh, being slaughtered in the United States, but we haven't stopped shark fin uh, industry in the United States. And it's time that we did that and did the responsible thing uh, because sharks are vital to the ecosystem. They keep our oceans in balance as well as healthy. And f over 50% of the air we breathe and 70% of the protein we eat either comes directly or indirectly from our oceans. So no matter where you live on the planet, it's important that we save sharks. Now the other question that you said was how, uh, some words of advice on how to avoid being bitten by a shark. It's very sad that uh, we put things up on beaches giving the illusion that it's safe to go there. Um, if you look in Florida, for example, fishing is very popular. You can't pass a bridge or, or a pier or a beach and not see fishermen putting bait in the water. And when you put bait in the water, you're, of course, you're attracting all fish, including sharks, to, to, to that direct vicinity. The problem um, is that it's not so much the fish they're putting in there, because sharks follow the scent of fish all the time, and usually 99% of the time, there's nothing at the end of the trail. So they swim very, very slowly in that direction. However, as soon as that fisherman catches a fish, that fish, struggling for its life, actually becomes live bait. It emits a vibration as well as um, noise that the, the shark uh, is fee I mean, that, that tells the shark, all I need to do there in order to be successful is beat all the rest of the sharks. So they race in at full speed. And during that time, anything that gives the similar signature yes. to a, a fish struggling, like a surfer paddling, right. they quickly bite, thinking that that might be it. And the, the problem, of course, is sometimes it's not the fish. So if you go to our own fishing piers here in Palm Beach County, you'll notice if, say, you're a, an adult with children going to enjoy the beach that day, 
you go up to the fishing piers and there's a big sign that says no shark fishing. You think, wow, that's good, no shark fishing. And, and then you look down on the beach and right there there's lifeguard stands. Okay, they can save us if there, we have a difficulty. And the, the problem with that is that no shark has ever been up to read the sign and I don't even know if they speak English. <laughs> so the amount of bait at fishing piers or around fishermen that's putting that ringing of a large dinner bell uh, to you is unheard and unseen by people. So avoid swimming next to any fisherman always. Don't go in the water yes. if there's fish jumping out of the water. Um, and uh, uh, only, well, you might want to not go in during dusk and dawn when it's very difficult for sharks to see. But realistically, mm -hmm. the chances of being bitten uh, by a shark are so rare. It's, uh, in, right. it's, it's amazing, the, the statistics, if you look at it. We should be concerned about the drive there from car accidents and right. almost everything else. I agree, I agree, having mm. talked to you. A whole new perspective, so I thank you very much. So for viewers out there that want to learn more about this topic, want to see you maybe at the Palm Beach Film Festival, which is going on this week, uh, where would you point them? Um, well, you can always just look at uh, my website and contact my office to find me. I'm hoping that this interview, as well as what you see in Tales by Light, will bring a, a whole bunch of new uh, nature lovers that actually want to make friends with a shark in a very short amount of time, which right. is exactly what we teach every single week. You bet. Well, thank you so much, Jim, for so joining are you, us. Are you one of those? Oh, one of the, that, that want to learn? Uh, yeah. I do, I do. And actually, I'll be honest with you, I never, last week you had asked me that and I would have said, well, maybe not. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, but after seeing it, uh, the movie, uh, the documentary, and then discussing with you, definitely, my, my opinion has changed. So, so maybe in the future we'll have a live yes how would you broadcast. like that viewers yes we can do that we'll yes, do a, we a live broadcast under the water so that's a future date all right okay all right so for viewers out there this has been dr shelley plum with from the hip until next time take care <laughs>